I think generative AI will be absolutely an integral part of probably every observability product. You know, why? It's a nice abstraction. It makes it easier. It's a more natural way to interface, you know, with these tools. So I think it's going to be a productivity benefit for, for users. Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Jeremy Burton, CEO of Observe. Jeremy, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, it's my pleasure to host you here today. Today, we are basically going to talk about Observe Hubble announcement that you folks made earlier this month. But before we go and talk about that, specifically since you are here on the show, I would love to hear, um, tell us about the company and it its role in this modern cloud-centric, cloud-driven, cloud-dating world? Yeah, the company was founded um, back in late 2017. So it's been quite a long journey. Um, but our observation was, no pun intended, was that um, cloud-native apps will become more complicated because of microservice architectures. And um, when things went wrong, it was possibly a brand damaging event because so many companies were were moving to you know produce a digital experience um you know it was no longer sort of part of the business it was the business and so when the it systems go wrong you know you 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 can't do business with your customers and so we thought well given that most people now are developing a core competence of software and are delivering you know new releases daily, um, it's going to become a big deal to, to troubleshoot those problems uh, when those applications go wrong. So Observe really took a fresh approach. Um, we tried to bring together what in the past has been sort of three discrete markets, um, log analytics, which maybe someone like Splunk was the leader, um, monitoring, which maybe someone like Datadog was the leader, and APM. Uh, which, I don't know, maybe someone like New Relic was the leader. So we are trying to produce one product that does all three because to troubleshoot these modern applications, it's not enough to just look at the logs or look at the metrics or look at the traces. You want to be able to look at any and all data that can help you troubleshoot that problem in in, in, in one view. So that that's really what we're trying to do. Uh, as I said, it's been about a five-year journey so far. When we look at, you know, among all the things that developers are responsible for, we look at observability. Talk about how you have seen the evolution of observability, you know, from the tracing, you know, monitoring. Also, we saw a lot of projects that consolidated open telemetry, open senses from Google and, you know, Lightstep. And the, the whole point is that, you know, these things are moving into developers' pipeline. So, so talk a bit about, you know, how does observability fit in developers' workflow? Uh, and what do, when they invest their time and resources, what do they get out of it? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, de developers, look, they, 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 they want productivity. They, they, they want to spend the maximum amount of time possible writing code, building new features, creating better experiences for, for their customers. I mean, I think that's what everybody is excited about. And obviously, like bugs, or worse, incidents detract from that. And what we've seen, um, I think the independent data I looked at, that the, the mean time to resolve an incident um, in, in, in your average company is, is 172 minutes. It was the last data I saw. It's almost three hours, okay? Now, best in class is actually 43 minutes. So I'm sure if you've got you know, Google's SRE team um, you, you can resolve an incident in, in 43 minutes. The problem is not everybody has Google's SRE team. And so I, I view observability as a way to try and allow almost every team to drive down their mean time to resolve incidents from almost three hours down to that best in class 45 minutes. Software should be able to deliver that productivity because then you know, that, that, that two hours that you're saving is going to be spent by a, a software developer doing what they love. You're building features. Nobody loves being woken up in the middle of the night working on an incident. And so, you know, observability done right will, will minimize the time required uh, to resolve those incidents. And, 
you know, as a side effect, allow folks to, to spend more time doing what they love? Yes, while it's true that we should free developers' time in doing what they love doing, also for a business perspective, they should be focusing on writing applications that add value to their business. That's where companies like Observe come to picture because, of course, there's a fact that open source driving the bird, but open source can solve day one problem. The companies need additional features, they need functionality, they need a throat to choke. Uh, so, so talk about the role that Observe plays in making things easier for developer, lowers the barrier of entry so folks can also add ob- observability into their pipelines. I mean, you bring up a great point about open source and there are many people you know, build applications on open source frameworks. Um, I mean, our view is that, look, observability, um, you could assemble an observability stack from open source, but I don't believe that it's anybody's core competence, um, you know, to, to, to build an observability stack. An observability stack is a means to an end. It's a way for you to resolve incidents. And so we, we offer a, like a SaaS service and we manage everything. And an engineer coming into Observe, I think they, they're just trying to get through their day. They're just trying to find the root cause of an issue, do the investigation and go back you know, to, to what they love doing. And so I, I feel like observability is one of those areas where, although there are open source stacks, I, I think most people want to buy an outcome. Give me a service, make sure it's always available, make sure it's easy to get going with and make sure it works. And so, so my guys who, who are using it can get in and out and get back to doing their day job. Um, and, I, and I think that, you know, that's sort of been our mantra and, and, and our approach. Let, let's make it seamless for the user. And so we manage everything from collecting the telemetry data, you know, right the way through to when the user queries it and we guarantee the availability and the latency and, and all that good stuff. So they don't have to worry about it. It, ju- it should just work, you know. And can you also talk about the evolution of Observe as a company, your services, your offering, which can also include the latest Hubble announcement so that you are also kind of evolving to be with your customers wherever they are in their journey? We offer a SaaS um, software service. So um, we, we don't deploy uh, the, the service on, on premises. Um, it, it's only in the cloud. Um, and the, the, the latest incarnation, the, the Hubble release is, is really a, a culmination of work that was, um, created by our first 50 or so customers. You know, I think when you're a startup, you know, you, you get going with your initial product, you get feedback, you, you iterate. And I think this, this release that we, we pushed out a couple of weeks ago was, was really designed to get the scale and the latency and the broad feature set to where most of our customers would want it. So we, you know, we think scaling the platform to a petabyte of data a day, you know, that, that, that will make it enterprise ready, uh, getting latency of data, you know, down below 15 seconds. So from the moment the data is created to the moment you can query it, it's 15 seconds. Um, the user interface, it, as I was saying earlier, it's it's got to be super simple. It's got to be super easy to use. Um, I think generative AI is going to add a lot in terms of making it very, very straightforward for new users to get going. Um, I think most companies would complain about how hard it is to hire. You know, the, the skills that they would need to troubleshoot an application are, are few and far between. Generative AI should make that on-ramp a whole lot easier than it's ever been. Um, so, you know, the, the product, I think, from in its early days, we didn't have generative AI. I think it was much harder for, for new users to get going. Today, we've got generative AI in the Hubble release. I think it's a lot easier for users to get going. Um, we didn't have the scalability when we first, you know, uh, shipped the product. Uh, I, th- I think... Uh, I think the first time we actually got a customer back in 2020, we were concerned that we could do a one terabyte a day. Now we can do a petabyte a day, um, you know, just three years later. So I think every startup is on a journey um, and, and you, you always try and respond to the feedback that comes from your, your prospective customer. Uh, and then look, there's a, there's a, a sort of 
narrow window of time you've got to build those features and you know you, you want to make sure that you build the features before you run out with money run, run out of money because then you can you know you can get more customers you can raise more money and the journey continues you talked about generative ai and that i i was going to ask a question about generative ai i want to look at it from different mm-hmm. perspective one is uh, generative ai workloads and second is generative ai for observability so how do you look at it uh, both ways i, th- I think generative a- ai will be absolutely an integral part of probably every observability product you know why well, it's a nice abstraction it makes it easier it's a more natural way to interface you know with these tools so i, I think it's going to be a productivity benefit for for users um i also think what we're starting to see is a new class of applications that are built against either open ai directly or or private large language models and people are going to want to observe that interaction um is my llm hallucinating um what's the latency what's the cost there's there's a whole bunch of metrics um and um i i think telemetry that you're going to want to look at in your generative ai application and the observability tools should provide visibility into that as well let's also talk about uh, series a funding uh, talk a bit about how the company has grown over the years and what are the areas where you will be in- investing with this funding round yeah we did we did our series a um about 3 years ago that was 15 million dollars and in, and for the last 3 years we we've, we've actually ran the company off of debt financing so it's a it's a convertible note underwritten by sort of hill ventures that did our our series a as well so it's a little bit unusual because people normally talk about debt financing as a as a bridge from it's like oh we raised the series a and we wanted to wait a little bit to maybe get some better numbers before we went and did the series b so we'll we'll you know we'll do some debt for us it's been a deliberate strategy to defer the company dilution to a point where we've got a, a real and functioning business we've you know got real revenue real customers um and and you know the company therefore is more valuable and so when we do the series b our debt will convert to equity and we'll we'll then start to look like probably any normal startup but we're a little bit unusual and and a lot of that is down to sort of hill ventures and i think they've been you know very good with the team here and helping us defer the dilution until the company was more valuable because the problem that we're trying to solve it's taken us 5 years and a lot of founding teams would get washed out you know if if we went and did it if we did a series b a year after we did our series a then we would have got a terrible valuation we would have had to give up you know most of the company and it would have been very demotivating and so the debt allows us to defer that dilution so it's been quite unusual but I think quite satisfying because although we will have to raise probably money next year um we we've got a like a very good business at this point and so we should be able to get a, a decent valuation Yeah so maybe unusual for us it took us a while to get our public free trial going um you know we spent a lot of time trying to prove out the core value of the product um and then we had to go back and and work on the user interface and the easy on ramp and a product led growth strategy so we're pretty excited that going to kubecon is everyone who's interested who comes to our booth we can now direct them to uh an observe free trial so and i know that's not like a new thing for every vendor but it it's certainly new for us and we're pretty excited about that um we've also got some interest in announcements coming with snowflake um unlike any other observability vendor um our data store is is snowflake and a number of our customers who have telemetry data in snowflake they would like us to share that data out to other snowflake users so that that telemetry data can be combined with other business data to give new insights so for example did any of my best customers have an error on my website 
and typically best customers is stored in some financial system and errors on the website is stored obviously in the, the web server logs. And if you can join those two together, you can get business context for telemetry. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. And we, we also are going to allow Snowflake customers to use their existing Snowflake contract to run Observe. So 99% of our customers today, they just buy Observe and Snowflake is embedded. But obviously, enterprise customers, they've got their own relationship with Snowflake. And if they want to use their Snowflake contract to run Observe, they're going to be able to do that. So there's a couple of interesting things with Snowflake that we're going to be talking about. Jeremy, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this new announcement, the whole uh, funding, and also, more importantly, the, the whole uh, observability landscape, how it's evolving. Thanks for all those insights. And I'd love to chat with you folks again. Thank you. Great. Thanks for the opportunity. 